Hey my YouTube friends, it's Richard, founder of STRU and Airbnb Superhost. And today's video is a breakdown of one of my properties, year one versus year zero. And the reason I'm sharing this with you has nothing to do with my property or how much money I'm making, but it's to show the life progression of what you can expect as you list and follow the steps that I've outlined in all my different videos and I teach so that you become a five star super host and how your pricing power increases. So these are actual numbers that I'm sharing with you. I just had Hardik pull them for me because I thought this would be really helpful and frankly, I'm really surprised. So I wanna show week by week the exact same period of time that booked in 2018. If you recall, I closed on my property in Jackson Hole in 2018. I did some renovations and by the time it was ready, it was summer of 2018. So I had no reviews. I was a super host in many other properties, but that property was brand new to market with no reviews and I got as much money as I possibly could and I thought was reasonable in 2018. And then over the course of one year with more hosting, more reviews, more five-star reviews, I'll show you what the results look like. But I wanna walk you through every single week that was booked in 2018 that has also been booked on 2019. So this is not the entire summer, it's just the exact same weeks that booked year over year so we can compare what pricing power, what reviews mean, what using beyond pricing does, and getting your footing in a new listing. And this will happen to me every single time I buy a new listing. This is the kind of thing that I'm going to expect. So as I model my performance, I use the very conservative day one rates to make sure that I can cash flow and be profitable. But in the back of my mind, I know that I will likely be much more profitable. How much? Well, let's find out. So June 25th of 2018, I rented on average for $352 per night. Fast forward one year, June 25th of 2019, which is, you know, pretty soon, $424 per night. The difference is $72 per night which is 20.45%. That's a 21% increase year over year for doing nothing except being a really good host, getting five-star reviews, having my place cleaned and so on. And here's the best part. Of those $72 per night and 21% difference, how much of that is profit? All of it. June 25th, oh, this is the same, oh, I guess this is a multi-period uh, reservation, 352, I also got $531, so $179 is the difference, 51% more. Let's go to 4th of July, peak, peak period. Uh, last year I made 372, so $20 bump up from 352 to 372, bumping up for the peak, and then you can see this year I made 618. That's $246 more per night or 66% more, my friends. Like, I'm shocked, you know? Like, I don't look at these numbers that carefully. I let the whole system run in the background. I anticipate a lot of this. It's very intuitive to me. But I asked Hardik to put this down because I thought it'd be very helpful and educational. And I myself am surprised that the numbers are quite this big. July 12th, $430 last year and I got 551, $121 more, 28% bump up. July 18th, 459, so you can see as the summer started to progress and we started to get more reviews, we started to increase our pricing even within the first summer. We went from 352 to 372 to 430 to 459. Now, I'm not sure exactly why, but as the summer trailed off and August starts to get kids back in school, our prices started to go down or maybe people booked you know, far in advance and we just wanted to get the bookings, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, 459, this year we got 553, that's $94, that's 21% more. July 23rd, 415, 414 a year ago, 553 this year, $139 more per night. Friends, that's 34% more versus a year ago. August 4th, $400 last year, $473 this year, $73 a night, 18% increase. August 7th, our lowest price point, I think, yep, our lowest price of the summer months that booked last year that also booked this year, $332. Not so much this year. In fact, this is our highest ticket price point. Somebody must have booked this far in advance, and that's the benefit of using dynamic pricing and I use beyond pricing. If you want to use it yourself, we'll include the link above. But check this out. The lowest price last year, August 7th, 332, is the highest price this year, 635. $303 difference per night, friends. 91% increase versus a year ago for doing the exact same thing. And all $303 per night is pure profit. 
This is why you need to be increasing your prices and using dynamic pricing and getting those five star reviews and really making sure that you're focused not on occupancy, but on profitability. $303, that's amazing. That's like two nights that I'm getting paid for one. August 16th, 368 to 398, 30 bucks a night, that's $8, 8% difference. So on average, if I had to mathematically calculate this, I'm probably somewhere around 30 to 35% more year over year for doing nothing except for adding tremendous value early, discounting my prices a little bit, leaving a little bit on the table, getting the right people in there, asking for the five-star review, being a great hospitable host, providing everything working order, checking in with them after they check in, you know, and just making sure that they have a great time and they become raving fans. And then, based on that trust, other people looking at my listing say, that looks great, I wanna be there, and they will pay more. This is a prime example of what you can expect as a host from when you list day one to a year forward if you're doing it really well. You may not be getting three to $400 a night in your location, maybe it's 100 to $130 a night, but that's why we included the percentages. The difference there, the 20, 50, 66, 28, those percentages will apply to whatever your rate is that you're currently charging, assuming that you're doing your pricing strategy properly, assuming that you're doing your hospitality properly, and assuming that you're a great host. And I will not expect this to occur, by the way, from year one to year two, right? Like the big bump up happens now, and then we'll stabilize and increase slowly, and then we'll probably come down a little bit, and now we're just in that dynamic pricing. The big bump happens from zero listings to say, 10 or 15 trusted listings. Let me know what you've done in your bump up from year zero to year one, what kind of percentages you've increased, and what experiences you've increased from year one to year two. I'll do this again a year from now, and I'll include year two, just so we can see what that looks like. Friends, I hope you found this helpful. If you have, please go ahead and like the video, and subscribe, and do me a favor, if you like this and this sort of analysis, come see me in Nashville, August of 2019. Let's go, friends.